Namo Buddha, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Uh, I am continuing with my uh, reading of the Dhammapada verses and my learnings on them. Uh, I am covering 141 onwards in this video. I take 20 verses in every video. There is a Dhammapada playlist. If you go in playlist on this channel, there is a full playlist you will find of all the Dhammapada verses that I have covered. So that you can refer. My uh, the, the verses that I am studying is from this book. The Dhammapada by Eknath Iswaran. You can find this book uh, on Amazon and all these places it is available. A really, really good book uh, for study of Dhammapada. You can refer this book. Uh, okay, so let us start verse number 141 to 160. We will cover in this video. Okay, okay. 141, verse number 141 and 142 are linked. So I will cover both. Buddha says, Going with about with matted hair, without food, or bath, sleeping on the ground, smeared with dust, or sitting motionless. No amount of penis can help a person whose mind is not purified. But those whose mind is serene and chaste, whose senses are controlled, and life is non-violent, these are true Brahmins, true monks, even if they wear fine clothes. So, important thing here is the Buddha is stressing the importance on purifying our mind. That is the goal of the, the aim of our practice, to purify because only with purification of the mind can we achieve the state of nirvana, right? Which is the end goal of all the teaching of the Buddha. It doesn't matter whether you are a monk or whether you are a lay person, how you whether you are dressed dressed in robes or I, you are dressed in fine clothes, it's all about how your mind is, right? So it's a great inspiration for people like you and me, if like you are a lay person like me. There is no such thing. Yes, we, we get fascinated uh, about the idea of being a monk and, you know, uh, meditating daily for like hours and hours together. Uh, but then there is this thing that in this life, as a lay person, doing all the household duties and the family and the worldly duties, we can still cultivate through the practice what Buddha has given, the Noble Eightfold Path. We can purify our mind and live in a still mind. We can meditate, have our still mind, and we are as good as any monk, right? So it's not about the clothes or the robes, it's about the mind, a purification of mind. Verse 143 and 144, Buddha says, As a well-trained horse needs no whip, a well-trained mind needs no prodding from the world to be good. Be like a well-trained horse, swift and spirited, and go beyond sorrow through faith, meditation, and energetic practice of the dharma. So if you see, Buddha is trying to say here is the importance of being self-motivated on this path. So we don't need to be motivated by someone to do so and so meditation or so and so practice. If you read the Dhammapada, then it is enough and enough places Buddha has given the importance of cultivating the right conduct and the right attitude towards life. Why? Because Otherwise, the suffering will continue, right? So, it is individual choice. If one wants to get free from suffering, then one comes to the path. But then Buddha insists that let doing all the practices or the following the path not be, let there not be an external motivation. Let there be an internal motivation, like a well-trained horse. So, the entire Dhammapada is filled with analogies so that lay people can understand. So, like a well-trained horse is there, he doesn't need prodding or, you know, scolding or something. You just, just pat and it runs. You just, right? So that way we have to be those like a well-trained horse and we have to be on, you know, galloping on the path of the dharma. We don't, we should not wait for someone external, some authority to prod us that we should take this path, right? Buddha has enough and enough times prodded us in Dhammapada by the verses to take the path. Now, after this, I don't think so. If we read the Dhammapada completely, we will not need any further motivation to be the uh, well-trained horse that Buddha wants us to be on this path. Right? Okay, verse number 145 is same as that we had covered. This verse was earlier also appearing. As the irrigators guide waters to their fields, as archers aim arrows, a carpenter carves the wood, the wise shape their lives. Right? So, as wise people we have to shape our minds, our lives, right? So, our lives means 
through the right conduct right as the irrigator ensures that the when they uh, you know leave the water in the fields the water flows in some particular directions that way we need to have the capability in us that so we have our limited energy right so we need to have that capability that we need to direct our energy in those certain activities that will bring us merit that will take us forward on the path to the nirmana and not engage in any evil activities or wrong activities which will cause us sorrow right so this is verse 145 now we come to verse 146 now the theme builds on the age right 146 to 145 is on age right the old age and everything buddha is basically prodding us that you know life is short right buddha is not denying life buddha is not saying that life this life is bad buddha is has always said that this human life is the precious gift that we have got but buddha is actually asking us the urgency right asking us to be you know quick in the pursuit of dharma right because this life will quickly go away right just in a bubble it's like a bubble it will quickly we don't know what happens tomorrow so today let's devote ourselves starting today let's devote ourselves to the dharma study the dharma practice the dharma and if you feel inclined then you can spread the dharma study practice and spread study practice spread right so study and practice is the first thing okay 146 why is verse 146 buddha says why is there laughter why merriment when the world is on fire when you are living in darkness why don't you look for light so buddha is questioning why do you enjoy make merry party and do all these things so buddha's intention is get stuck in the sensory pleasures why do you get stuck in these sensory pleasures why whereas the world is on fire that means where there is all sorrow around around you when you are living in darkness when you know that there is darkness in your life why don't you look for the light so if we enter into a dark room what we do the first thing is that we search for the switchboard and light the uh, switch the light on so why what keeps you from switching the light on in your life what keeps you from taking the path of dharma now that you have seen enough suffering so buddha is questioning us 147 148 this body is a painted image subject to disease decay and death held together by thoughts that come and go what joy can there be for those who see that their white bones will be cast away like gourds in the autumn right so basically what buddha is saying that it is like just this body held together by the flesh and the thoughts in the mind it's just impermanent right so what joy what joy is there who know that these their white bones their bones will be cast away when when the person dies the bones are cast away in the fire or you know like a gourds in the autumn so there are no gourds in the autumn right so they will be cast away so what joy what joy this body what joy do you find in this body it's everything is going to be impermanent verse 150 151 around the bones is built a house plastered with flesh and blood in which dwell pride and pretense old age and death even the chariot of king loses its glitter in the course of time so too the body loses its health and strength but goodness does not grow old with the passage of time so here what buddha is comparing the in a person see as a people buddha knows very clearly is our attachment towards the body right we are attached to our own body and we take too much care about our own body right that acts as a barrier for us and then we are attracted towards other bodies the sexual desire and the lust right so buddha is actually bringing our, our awareness into the fact that this body is going to die everything is going to end then why are you so much attached to the body buddha is comparing to a chariot a king's chariot also loses its glitter so what what this body is all about it's just a some temporary being held and in this body lies all the pride arrogance thoughts everything right but buddha is comparing it with goodness the good deeds that we do they do not die right they will not die the in the earlier verses that we studied buddha compared the fragrance of the good deeds to something that spreads to the gods right it goes to the god it spreads everywhere right so that goodness will not die so all so friends what happens is when we die 
this body will be here all the money that we have earned all our relationships all our children family members they will all be here what will go with us is our karmas so that's why buddha said in the five remembrances also you can see a video i made on that buddha says that buddha said that everything else will go but this the karmas they are my true friends i cannot escape the consequences of my actions so only our karmas are our true friends so what deeds we do they only will continue so let's pay attention to the deeds that we do okay 152 verse 152 buddha says buddha compares a man with an ox buddha says a man who does not learn from his life grows old like an ox his body grows but not his wisdom right so person who is doesn't learn uh, is not conscious he keeps growing old his body grows old and and he dies but he doesn't gain wisdom verse 153 154 buddha says i have gone through many rounds of birth and death looking in vain for the builder of this body heavy indeed is birth and death again and again but now i have seen you the house builder you shall not build this house again its beams are broken its dome is shattered self will is extinguished extinguished nirvana is attained so here buddha is bringing about the concept the 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 idea about uh, uh, suffering that one encounters life after life birth and death birth and death the cycle continues so buddha says the what what is more the four the water in the four oceans or the number of tears that you have that you have, that you have wept in all these lives right so buddha brings our attention to this whole thing about keeping getting birth and dying this whole cycle it's painful the suffering so buddha says now that i know that how it is caused the house builder house builder is our karmas and now that i know that our conditioning which has caused this continuous birthing right we get continuous births in new new realms now that we know and i have broken beams are broken that means i have destroyed all the conditioning through my penance through the right effort my self will is extinguished nirvana is attained that i am now free and i am now free and whatever i now do doesn't bind me and i will never come because of my karmas right so it is like said that people who so we are all bound by the law of karma we get born and born because of our karmic structure makes us born again and again to extinguish our karmas but then there are some souls like the buddha fully enlightened ones they extinguish all their karmas then they don't need to come back again they they don't have any karmas left to make them come back again then if they come back that is just to help just to help the society help the community help the world right verse 155 those who have not practiced spiritual disciplines in their youth pine away like old cranes in a lake without fish like worn out bows they lie in old age sighing over the past so it's all about the regret of a life not well lived they are just just waste their life completely so friends let us take this as an inspiration not to waste our life and to dedicate ourselves to the practice of the dharma as taught by the buddha so now we come to 157 155 156 we have discussed now let's come to 157 now here the the section starts about verses about the self self and the non self aspects right so 157 verse 157 buddha says if you hold yourself dear guard yourself diligently keep vigil during one of the three watches of the night so buddha says that guard yourself guard your actions guard your conduct guide guard yourself right be mindful 158 159 learn what is right then teach others as wise do before trying to guide others be your own guide first it's hard to learn to guide oneself so here buddha is talking about the teachers that if we want to teach the dharma well first you need to learn and practice it yourself rather than being in a hurry to teach because sometimes what happens is teaching or guiding others can be out of the two motives one is due to that person's own ego that you know uh, he 
knows so much well and he wants to be perceived as knowing so much things and the other motive is a more nobler motive here person wants to share the buddha's teachings to lot and lot of people that people come in the teachings so what i do as in making these videos is basically basically i want to spread the teachings far and wide so that people come in the teachings not that i am teaching you know some someone something i am not qualified to do that i am not a dharma teacher i am a dharma student myself so here buddha says the same thing that learn first what is right then you teach others as the wise do before trying to guide others be your own guide first that is a difficult thing it's better it's easier to tell others what to do right rather than following it for oneself right okay last verse for this video is verse number 160 where buddha says your own self is your master who else could be with yourself well controlled you gain a master very hard to find so this buddha again points to our our own capability we need to cultivate so people what they do is that they lot of times they they lament that they don't have a master they don't have a guru right how to then move forward on the spiritual path then they procrastinate they delay moving forward in the spiritual path now i have this view that take the light in you what raman maharishi sri raman maharishi an indian saint said the light within you is your guru right gurus like buddha jesus krishna they are all physical manifestations of the guru principle that is in us so take that in take that guru principle start taking start the first step take the first step and then the second step and then the and just take the first step and the help will come but one more thing first make yourself raise your level so people think i say i don't have a good guru or something but first you have to raise your level because you'll only find a guru who is a mirror to you right if you are at this level you will not find a guru at this level you will find a guru at same level who can guide you as, as as what your stage is and in my spiritual journey i came in my spiritual journey in 2005 i have observed that masters change guides change right over time through various books and other sources and you know lot of ways knowledge comes to you knowledge portals keep opening as how you raise your level of consciousness right so just keep working on the level of consciousness rather than lamenting that i don't have the right guru or this guru or that guru just keep working on yourself and the guru will find you the matching there is a some higher order where the matching is done and you will find a right guru for you who can guide you in a proper way right okay so this is till 160 we have done 142 141 to 160 i hope you find found some value in our discussion do share your comments thoughts perspectives in the comment section i will be glad to hear and i will be glad to respond to them and uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye